Life's a journey and we do it in community. I'm sure we've all felt a sort of desert island experience recently during these times of lockdown. So we want to reflect with others on their journey. So why don't you join me on Desert Island Reflections. If you're gonna go fast, go it alone. If you wanna go far, you gotta go together. In this season where many are feeling like they're living a desert island experience. I want to bring us closer together through stories. Although physically distant, our stories will bring us closer together and closer to God. This week on Desert Island Reflections, we don't stray too far from home. Joining me is none other than my lovely wife, Hannah. Hannah, you uh, claim that you're terrified of a lot of things, heights, small spaces, crowds, horses and even bins. You love spending time with people and getting to know new people. Hannah, welcome to Desert Island Reflections. Thank you. So Hannah, tell us, uh, what are you currently up to? What are you doing? So I'm a primary school teacher. At the minute I teach senior infants. Um, and it's a job that I really enjoy. Um, I've, I really love um, teaching and I missed it a lot when I was at home there for a few months um, doing online stuff so um, it's nice to be back and it's, I find it a great job um, just for our family life. Where did you grow up? Yeah so I grew up in Banbridge um, in County Down. I had a great childhood, um, I was the oldest of four. I um, just had a lot of fun memories of growing up. Um, there was definitely a lot of laughter in our house with a lot of fun. Um, I I was like a kind of crazy bookworm person. Whenever I was uh, um, a kid, I used to my favourite place in the world to go was the library, and I used to spend I used to like stay up till my parents were going to bed every night reading books. So I um, kind of still am the same now, except that I need to switch the light off. A bit too soon, I just, yeah, so that's, um... Yeah, I have to have pitch black. <laughs> Why don't we add some chocolates into these, just oh, so yeah. that we don't... Oh yeah, that's right, yeah. this one's better. I just, I hate that some people would feel uh, aggrieved. <laughs> Any specific childhood memories? Yeah, so it was hol we, uh, we had great holidays, we went um, to France lots of times, which was great fun. And also we used to go skiing. We used to go down um, the valley, which was near our house. Um, me and my, the four of us children and our dog. So we even painted the famous five on the shed. Um, <laughs> but it was painted, I think it's spelled F-A-M-O-S. So we weren't so good at the spelling. When did God become real to you? And I suppose I saw the relationship that my parents had with God when I was about Five years old, I think I went and prayed a prayer, asked for God into my heart. It was really when I was 15 that I really started to um, kind of really progress on that journey. I just really started reading the Bible and um, I remember like ticking off different books as I'd read them. That summer really started a real journey of faith and a real time of getting closer to God. Is there a scripture that you want to share with us that maybe, you know, came out of that time or, or something specific that you want to talk to us about? So I think the verse that um, helps me a lot with that is, is uh, cast all your care upon him for he cares for you. I just know that the Lord is interested in all of the small details of our lives and he cares so much about each one of us. Um, I just learnt over time, I've just learnt the skill of not holding on to things at all and just handing them over to God. Um, just like if there's ever a feeling anxious or feeling worried or feeling stressed, I just take time to set, to just give it all up to mm. God. What about another verse then that maybe has acted as a bit of a signpost in your life or maybe came as a, maybe even just confirmation? Proverbs 3, verses 5 to 6. 
um, where it says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and don't lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. And I think that when we're um, following the Lord and he shows us a certain way to go, sometimes it takes that trust and that faith to then just follow in his paths and not um, concern ourselves with our own, well, you know, um, to not lean on our own understanding. Has there been a verse that you've been sort of reflecting on during this time that sort of encouraged you? Yeah, so I mean, I, I always think of that verse, in all things God works for the good of those who love him and are called according to his purpose. And I just think like, even when things look very bleak and even when you can't see the way ahead, I just think, yeah, keeping that as your bottom line, that God works for the good in all things, even the worst things that God, God is still bringing good out of. Um, and I just think that's having that can just help us have such a positive mindset to life, you know, that it's just like, this is, you know, God is going to bring good out of even the worst things. What are some of the things that you've missed? Well, I've really missed not getting up as often to see my family. I've also, I just definitely missed being in church and being part of church. So that's something I'm looking for. Obviously, being part, we're able to be part of church online, but going in and being there in person is different. And um, what, what, lastly, just maybe, um, well, two little things. What, maybe what has been one learning from lockdown? Um, something that you've you've um, almost like a maybe a bit of a revelation or something that you've appreciated from lockdown, um, and then maybe just what you're looking forward to in the future. I think that I think we've all kind of learned to be a bit more content with doing less. You know, mm. I am a real, I love doing stuff. I'm a real doer, and I love. I love running the kids from one thing to the next and going here and going there. I, I love all that. Yeah. So I think we've all, me and the kids have probably all got a bit better at not having as much on. Yeah. And that's all right. You know, I think that's a good skill that will help everybody. So um, Hannah, is, is there anything like at a point in your life you felt the Lord very clearly sort of say something to you? Um, I, I, I have in a few different situations, but the... I was just, I was thinking that there was something that I felt like the Lord, a sort of picture in my head to do with that uh, verse in Proverbs, about trust in the Lord with all your heart. And also it ties into casting all your care upon him for he cares for you. I, I kind of had felt like the Lord, you know, like a, a net, you know, a lot of things that we can rely on are like a net. You could fall through the holes yeah. in it, but um, I kind of feel like, you know, the Lord is like a trampoline in that we can like lie completely on him and we know we won't fall down. Yeah. I, I, I've kept that image in my mind just um, just in different situations where I've really needed to rely on the Lord. I just think yeah. you know, that's that's how reliable the Lord is. You would you would lie down on a trampoline, well I would lie down on a trampoline and I'd trust that yeah. you can feel the same. Whereas sometimes if you don't have that trampoline underneath you and you were just relying on a net, you wouldn't be in the same yeah. situation. So yeah, that was that's been a helpful image for me to keep in mind. I think.